Hello and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Thursday the 18th of May. Glad to see you all here today. Um, considering what I might talk about today, uh, yesterday it sort of hit me upside the head because I was doing my daily devotions and I use a couple of different things. And the first one I was using was um, from our daily bread and it was, it was, um, an invitation to think about God remembering our names. And it talked about the, um, the writer was talking about how when she started working as a youth leader in her church, one of the first days that she was there, she walked up to a young girl who was shy and was sitting with her mother and she had met her before and she greeted her and remembered her name. And the young lady was so excited that someone would remember her name in a church that was really mostly adults and how powerful it was for someone to name her, to remember her name. And then in my other one that I use, Soul Fuel by Bear Grylls, um, I'm going to read it to you. He says, there, no accident. There are more than 25,000 varieties of orchid, and the orchid is just one of 270,000 different flower species. There are more than 100 billion stars like our sun within our galaxy, and our galaxy is one of more than 100 billion other galaxies. It is said that for every grain of sand, there are a million stars. I love the fact that it almost feels like a throwaway line in Genesis when the writer tells us he also made the stars. Genesis chapter 1 verse 16. Good, clearly, God does not do things by halves. God operates on the most massive scale, a scale too big for us to get our heads around. But there's something even more mind-blowing than the size and detail of creation. It's the fact that God knows each one of us by name. He knows everything about us and he loves us. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. And that is the message interpretation of Psalm 139 verse 13. You aren't a mistake and you're not overlooked. You're known and loved by the most powerful force in the universe. In chapter 43 of Isaiah, it says, uh, the writer says, you have called me by name, you are mine. <clears throat> Excuse me. I remember when I was 13 years old, just before I turned 14, it was in May, probably actually 39 years ago, 38 years ago, um, 38 years ago, I think, um, now that I was being confirmed at St. Martin's Church in Niagara Falls, Ontario. The bishop was coming and we were to be confirmed. And my parents gave me a Bible, a New Jerusalem Bible, um, my first sort of grown up Bible. And they gave that to me. And my mom wrote with calligraphy, Isaiah chapter 43, verse one, I think, might be verse three, but um, I have called you by name, you are mine. And I remember thinking how powerful that was. And then reading, um, Bear Girl's message yesterday morning reminded me of that, 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 that God doesn't do things by halves. God does everything with a very particular bent. There is a reason. And I don't, I'm not saying that there's a reason why God takes thing, people from us, that someone dies. I don't believe that. I think that's really bad theology. But I think that when God created, when God creates, I think God still creates, there is attention to detail. There is a purposefulness for why this flower has this striation of color or why this person has this color hair or straight hair or short hair or curly hair. I think that there's not that there's an intention that for, that there's a purpose, a reason why this person has straight hair or curly hair. I think it's more like God saying, you, I am creating and I'm creating you uniquely like our fingerprints and snowflakes are all different. There's no matter how close they might be, there's some little tiny part of it that is completely unique to who we are. And just the fact that God pays attention to such things, that God would create the stars and name that in, in the vastness of creation, God would do something so specific as make each individual star. And however we understand that stars are made, the point being that somehow, whether they were popped into the sky, I don't think so, or whether they're supernovas that explode, or I don't know the science of, astro of astronomy, um, but however that happens, those things are not by accident. Um, I think that God does know them, and God revels in these beautiful parts of creation. And I think 
that is something that our society is really missing. We are striving so hard for power and influence. We're striving so hard to be the loudest and the most obvious and the most influential that we've forgotten that at the heart of it, what really matters most is who we are and who we are to other people. I mean, I, I have lots of subscribers on YouTube and a percentage of them watch my videos every day. And I got to admit, it feels good. It's so cool to see that more people are watching a video or that people are commenting and they're agreeing with me and even disagreeing with me is okay too. Um, it's, it's, it feels great. But at the end of the day, what feels even greater is when I wake up in the morning and I look over my coffee cup at my husband who chooses to be there with me every day. How incredible is it that another human being who can make choices and who can, you know, who could have probably given him a million reasons over the past 17 and a half years to say, adios, I'm out of here. And yet he chooses to stay in relationship with me, with all my foibles and all of the things that must drive him absolutely crazy and vice versa. I choose to be with him. I choose to be his wife, his best friend. I choose to, I choose to know his name every single day. And the fact is that when it comes down to it, we can have the biggest fan base in the world. We can have millions of followers. We can have all the money in the world. We could be the richest person on the planet. And at the end of the day, when we close our eyes, can we hold that money? Can we give a hug to all those millions of followers? Or is it better to know that we are loved? And I recognize there are lots of people out there who don't have a person to love and maybe don't even have like a dude to love. But the fact is that we are given love by God. And I know that for some people who don't believe, who, who may think that this is all just gobbledygook, gobbledygook that, I, that I, I feed myself to delude myself in my, in my, you know, weaker moments. Okay. But at the end of the day, I know what experience I have had. I know that for instance, when this woman named Doreen died in my first parish. I've talked about this before. I think I'd been ordained for about three years. I was living by myself. I wasn't in a relationship. And I remember I got the phone call at about two o'clock in the morning that Doreen had died and her husband was okay. They'd never had any children, um, but he wanted me to know. And I remember being absolutely heartbroken. I'd buried other people from my parish. I'd had many funerals before that, but Doreen was the first person who died in my congregations that I had gotten to know really well and love. She sat in the third pew from the pulpit every Sunday morning in her brown trench coat. Her husband would drop her off, pick her up. And, and Doreen was important to me. And when she died, it was when I found out it was two in the morning, I had, it was too late to call somebody and say, like, I'm sad. Can you, can you talk to me for a few moments? And I was really angry and frustrated that I felt so alone. And I said, okay, God, I prayed a, a very angry prayer. Um, angry that God would take Doreen from her husband, John, and from our congregation and from my life, and angry that I had to be by myself. When was Why couldn't there be someone there to comfort me? And as I tried to lay down and go to sleep, I realized I felt the presence of God around me. It felt like I was being hugged tight. As a matter of fact, that hug was so tight that after a little while, I had to ask God to release his arms just a little bit. The feeling of being hugged was, was, had become so strong that it was almost, it wasn't a bad thing, but it was almost like I was getting claustrophobic. I needed a bit of release. But the fact is that God heard me and God loved me so much, Rachel Walker at the time, so much that I needed, I, that God knew I needed to be hugged. I, he, God knew that I needed in that moment to be comforted and consoled. And God provided that to me. Has it happened millions of times? No, it's happened more often than some would guess. Has it happened every time I needed it to happen? Of course not. I don't know that that wasn't because that was because God wasn't comforting me or I wasn't up to paying attention to it. I'm not saying that that will be everybody's experience, but I am suggesting that maybe if we begin to recognize and accept the fact that God loves us that much, that God knows our very name, then maybe we might be willing to step into a relationship with God, sort of like 
getting going from acquaintances to friends spending time with god and saying okay so if you're real so i know for a lot of people god's not real if you're real show me because you know what i think god's up to the task <laughs> he's up to the challenge i think that if we open ourselves up to to acknowledging that god is in our lives that we might find that god has been in our lives since before we were born i encourage you to to look up psalm 139 it is my favorite psalm it may indeed be one of my favorite pieces of scripture just take a look at it psalm 139 sort of pretty much right in the middle of your bible if you've got an old and new testament um, or google it you can always google psalm 139 and read what it says we are not alone god knows us by name and we have been spectacularly made i hope that today gives you an opportunity to recognize the uniqueness and the individuality and the beauty that is you even if yourself if you doubt yourself please know that there are others including god out there who see you for who you are as a beautiful wonderful talented gift to the world god bless you and i will see you again tomorrow for church at home with rachel